we can discover. Encouraging questioning is not limited to updating the knowledge system. And many students who fail the college entrance exam often fall into depression. Some may even resort to suicide. These unethical. For a long time, many people believe the Middle Ages in Europe were dark and ignorant. People submitted to the authority of the church and engaged in opportunistic behavior. In fact, ancient Greek culture did not disappear in the Middle Ages. When we trace back the tradition of debate in the classroom and the spirit of questioning, we can clearly discover in history the context in which this academic tradition was formed. It actually began in the Middle Ages. In Paris, France in the 11th century AD, there was a popular philosophy and theology professor among students. He had many students and followers. His teaching style was also very open and challenging. Therefore, he often attracted large numbers of students to attend his lectures. He is known as Abelard, the first intellectual in Europe. He believed that only through criticism and refutation can people truly understand the essence and truth of things. Even in the face of faith in God, it should be based on reason. People should maintain full freedom to criticize all works of previous authority. Regarding traditional beliefs, people should not blindly accept without thinking. In his works, whether it is, he once listed 156 theological propositions and presented two completely different views, which are hard to forget. It's not the propositions themselves, but what he mentioned in the book. The best way to solve academic problems is to persist and frequently question, because questioning leads to verification, and verification leads to truth. He opposed authoritative doctrines, and also opposed blind obedience. He encouraged independent thinking and free expression. He encourages people to think independently and express themselves freely. As a figure in the medieval universities of France, he was a pioneer in challenging the authority of the church. He also influenced numerous universities across Europe. He made many controversial statements in his time. He not only resolved these disputes through debate, but also advocated for fairness, equality, and openness in debates. He believed diversity was the source of progress. Universities must focus on interdisciplinary communication. Learning should also embrace the existence of minority opinions. Under his influence, students began to appreciate dialectics. This aligns with our modern education system, sharing many similarities. Logic and philosophy in the medieval era were already compulsory subjects. Whether in medieval Europe or modern times, they both highly value students' critical thinking skills. Students not only need to master basic knowledge from textbooks, but also possess critical thinking skills and the ability to think independently. The dialectics advocated by Abelard with a culture of debate, it is indeed a key method to cultivate this ability, believed by many international students, will be very familiar with the academic writing style of critical review. It usually requires you to conduct a comprehensive critical evaluation analysis. Rebuff Q contrary in one. Rebuff Q contrary when evaluating the subject. When evaluating the subject, cannot simply quote and be logically consistent, but rather to objectively consider its strengths and weaknesses comprehensively. Rationality and limitations. In fact, critical review is conducted based on dialectics. Returning to our initial discussion on cultural concepts, in fact, encourages a spirit of questioning and emphasizes the cultivation of critical thinking, does not mean abandoning one's cultural traditions. For example, Japan and South Korea still love their traditional cultures, but the reason they have become developed countries, one of the key factors, lies in the reform of the education system. Many viewers saw this. Perhaps they may think I am exaggerating. They overemphasize the importance of education. In fact, many people often simply believe, as long as the national income is high enough and the economy is good, can become a developed country. Whether a country is a developed country, of course, it includes these high income requirements. However, high income countries are not necessarily developed countries. And the only criterion for undeveloped countries, like oil exporting countries such as Saudi Arabia, although they have huge oil reserves, the average income of the citizens is also very high, but they overly rely on the use of resources. It may instead fall into a resource trap, leads to a very backward overall economic development level. It can be said, if a country's main economic means, it is the use and resale of natural resources. Then, no matter how high the national income of this country is, it may also be difficult to become a developed country. So in reality, education is the key to a country. Many viewers see this, due to the growth of total wealth, not solely dependent on the occupation of resources, but rather relies more on the ability to integrate resources, and the ability to integrate resources. It greatly tests a person's logical thinking, and analytical skills. It can be said, not encouraging questioning will not only harm the students themselves, but also stifle a nation's creativity. Questioning is the foundation of philosophy and science. Questioning means challenging traditional beliefs and conventional thinking. Encouraging questioning is a fundamental characteristic of a developed country. Encouraging questioning. It also does not conflict with the cultural value of respecting teachers and elders. Those who promote academic cliques in universities, sectarian teachers, often lack real talent and knowledge. They often engage in plagiarism and fraud. They are a hotbed for infringing on others' intellectual property rights, rather than the spirit of questioning itself, wrapped in the guise of respecting teachers and elders to satisfy personal interests. These academic vampires are the biggest destroyers of cultural traditions. Follow me to take a popular look at philosophy. Next time, let's talk about Abelard's theory of concepts. Friends, see you next time.